Hello guys and welcome to another immersive engineering tutorial video. Uh, before we get started with today's topics, as we can see here, I just want to mention that I have uh, in a previous video, I might have said something incorrect and I just I want to quickly say that medium voltage and low voltage maximum length is 16 blocks as standard and high voltage as we see here can reach 32 blocks as standard. So with that out of the way, let's get started. The first thing we will mention or go through is the, uh, the this one, the tank, the fluid tank. We uh, mentioned it previously in, a, in another video, and uh, but we never used it. So this is how it looks when it's filled up with uh, biodiesel actually. So I've created a tank here, just outputting to the bottom as, as they, they do. And you input to the side of the tank, of this one, or at the top. So you can, now it's actually completely filled up. It's 512 buckets, but we can remove, you can actually use the hammer to disable a side like this. So we can, see, easy and just use the top instead, but uh, it's filled up already, so we can move on. To extract liquids, just flip the uh, lever on the side and it will be automatically output to the bottom. Great, now we have lots of biodiesel, what can we do with it? Well, we can, we can send it to the bottling machine. A small multi-part build uh, structure, steel scaffolding, light engineering, another light engineering block with some conveyor belts that we covered in a previous video. And they have to be in a quite specific pattern, as you can see here. And you can do it either this way or the other way. You can mirror it if you want to. And then right click here. So now here we have the two variants to the left or to the right. Um, basically, Nothing strange. Power to the top and liquids back here. And when you send a, something with a container, like a, like a bucket or a bottle, then they will be filled by the machine and spit out back here. So this is how it looks. Perhaps you have a dropper dispenser. I don't know what you have, but you have something. Place an item onto this uh, conveyor belt and it's filled. Simple. And it comes back out here and you can send it to a chest. Simple as that. You can do the same thing here with a bucket. Let's see if we have... Oh, see, we don't have enough. You see this one has to be on, as I suspected. But now if we do that we should get it. Perfect. And basically you can fill lots of items. If they have a container, then you can fill them, but perhaps not as, uh, as large as, the, as this one, 512. Let's see, we got actually 17 buckets. I wonder if that is what we had in the internal tank. So, fill anything. You can fill the chemical thrower or the uh, the drill and I will cover them in a different video but not in this one. Power up here as I said. Fluid back here. I have a capacitor over there just to feed this one. All right I think that's pretty much it. It's, uh, it's not more complicated than that and it's very easy to use. So we can actually move on with, uh, with not directly related block, but uh, since we are using conveyor belts, and we talked about it last time, I think it's quite appropriate to do this right now. The item router. Iron, treated wood, iron parts, quite cheap to build. And this one has inputs and outputs in all directions, all six directions. It has an in GUI. If you right click, you will come to this. And it's very, very simple to use. And I will 
I think it's actually easier if we do it if we go back here so if we do like this we have an input and we have an output and we have another output so now we can see actually we can have one more output up here All right simple if you don't have anything in the router nothing filtered things will just go straight through it will end up here but it could have it could have been over here as well see so we have no filters we should have filters so if we take a look in this one let's see they have the yellow and the blue they it's the east and the south and then we have the top and the bottom so top i think is a good place for crafting tables and perhaps steel scaffolding can go to the south the blue and nothing in the yellow side and now if we do this see we got them to the blue side the scaffolding to the blue and top our crafting tables perfect if we then set another filter over here the yellow one for example let's set, set lead ore the thermal foundation lead ore perfect now we have filled all of them so now if we try to insert a fence it has nowhere to go and it will be stuck over here so uh, that's not good so you should always at all times have uh, have a free path for uh, non-sorted items i think that's pretty pretty wise and let's see we have the these filter filter options or dictionary mbt data fuzzy do you perhaps recognize these from other mods but let's say we don't have this or dictionary and we just throw some lead like this it will be picky what is allowed through the yellow see yellow but as soon as we activate the ore dictionary then the rest of the lead ore types is also allowed so this means that we can replace this dropping conveyor belts belt with a with a router and then we just continue the path and uh, set the chest here if i just can get to it there we have it let's see if that works and then let's configure it so we get let's see the bottom side is the black so we want our bucket and bottle to go down like that is this still on all right then we can try to fill one of those one of these and they will go straight through and we can actually throw the tank there as well and see how much we can get in it perhaps not so much let's see if we emptied the internal tank but as you can see it just got spit out mm, and we can't do that we have to have one like here now it should work let's try it one more time we got roughly 30 buckets so i think it's quite empty now as you can see nothing happened so all the unfilled parts will just be spit through and end up in here all right i think it works quite well and i think the router is very quite i think we covered it now so let's move on to one final item since we have covered fluids and and such i think it's i think it's time to go through the fluid pump simple to build fluid pipes iron ingots iron mechanical components and this is how it looks it's a two it will look like this when you place it it has two blocks tall and we have uh, when you place it let me just do this first 
it's pre-configured to have blue to the bottom and if you remember the capacitors from before blue means input orange means output and nothing means well nothing so right now we can set two inputs we can set one output like this very easy to just reconfigure and we have some power input to the top so let's go through how it works the the fluid pump has it has some uh, pretty neat functions to start with you can pick up fluids from the from the world here i have water down here and we can pick it up to do this we need a redstone signal we need to configure this part as an output orange we need to have a redstone signal on and we need power so here we have some capacitor we have some power and we have an output pipe to this and as soon as we flip this this lever to on we will get water here so now it's just sucking up water from down here pretty good um right let's move on to another way of using it uh, it has a functionality of uh, extracting fluids from from inventories that is not automatically outputting as you might know these portable tanks from thermal expansion they can automatically output to the bottom so if i have this pipe going all the way here as you can see we have some diesel coming in here directly okay that works but perhaps you want to extract it from the side for some reason or it's another type of a container then you can actually use the pump and you can you remember that we have the blue input like here and then just turn the red redstone signal on and as you can see we're getting diesel now so this this part doesn't require power it will just change or yeah make the tank output to this side you can i guess you can say that but if we apply redstone power or power to it redstone signal is uh, always always required if you want to extract as you can see it's uh, configured correctly but nothing is happening but as soon as we flip the lever it will output all right but if we also give it power we can take it from here and we can compare these two this is automatically outputting well not so much fun seven eight nine and if we i guess we can do like this so they are equal but now if we flip this lever this pump is now powered and will output so much faster 50 60 70 and this is still at 25 so a significant increase but if you don't want to you don't have to you can just do like this and then it's as fast as this one see 40 50 i guess it has some all right it has some rf still in there but as soon as they replen deplete then these will be equal and i think that's pretty much it for this tutorial i think we covered quite a lot in a short time and since we have covered so much in this mod uh, i try to cover them in categories power production power distribution or handling and so on we have done so much coverage already so from this point and forward videos will be more of this type that we cover specific items and perhaps only two or three different blocks in the video because it's actually not that many more areas to cover at this part stage but uh, there are more to cover and i will do more but perhaps it will be in a slightly different style compared to the first ones all right i hope that's everything is clear and i hope that you enjoyed this video and this mod because i really do take care and i'll see you next time bye bye